Do you walk away or do you stay? If you're going through a tough time in your marriage, I know that trying to come to some sort of clarity around that decision is a really, really difficult thing. In this video today though, I'm gonna walk you through a few reasons why walking away can actually make you really magnetic towards your partner or husband. It can really promote your ability to attract him back into your life. And the first reason why it is so powerful to walk away is it allows you to connect into your authentic power. What that means is we're not talking about power in like a tyrannical way or anything like that. What we're talking about is really a state of empowerment. See, a lot of the time, when individuals are in relationships, they give their power away to the other person. You know, they constantly find themselves trying to, you know, meet that person's needs, always trying to put them first all the time and forgetting about themselves. The amount of times that I hear from clients about, look, I feel like I've lost myself in the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years. It is incredible how many times I hear that and it's because so many of these women are basically giving their power away to their man and effectively saying, look, I want to do everything I can to try and make sure that you love me and continue to love me over and over and over. Or I feel like I'm not good enough and I need to keep trying to prove to you that I am enough. And then that ultimately ends up becoming quite unattractive for the man or it results in them taking advantage of you and controlling every aspect of you, which leads to more issues down the line as well. But by connecting in with your authentic power, when you actually genuinely empower yourself, a magical thing happens. And what that is, is that we get to a place where we actually accept the worst case scenario. You know, I always find that if you want to achieve anything in life, you want to achieve the career of your dreams, if you want to, you know, manifest the, the person of your dreams, you want to manifest the money, whatever it is, you have to get to a place where if it doesn't happen, you know you're going to be okay. There is something magical that happens when we get into that mindset because it means that we're not being motivated by fear. See, if we are being motivated by fear, if we're like, man, I've got to have that job or I've got to have that money, whatever, we're putting that energy of fear out there. And the universe or God or whatever doesn't respond to fear, it responds to faith. If we get to a place of knowing that either things are going to work out or worst case, if it doesn't work out, I'm going to be okay, once again being driven by faith, then you're only going to get things that are going to be for your highest good. We take that mindset of, oh no, if this doesn't work out, all hell's going to break loose. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to survive. How am I going to make money? How am I going to live in this situation, whatever it is, then that fear is going to continue to manifest itself and that's not going to be an enjoyable place for you at all. So really step into that place of faith, really step into your own authentic power and that can really allow you to get to a beautiful calm place and ultimately get to a place where you actually become quite attractive to him. He's going to be hooked into you because of that power that you're stepping into. Now, I want to be clear here that when I'm talking about some of these techniques and, and strategies, it always comes down to intent. If your intent is, all right, well, I'm going to do some of these things and I'm going to use it in such a manipulative way in order to get the thing that I want, then you're not doing it with the right intent. Your intention needs to always come from love. And that may not necessarily be love for him. It may be love for yourself and saying, look, I have endured a lot of pain over these years. It's actually time for me to step up to really empower myself and actually know that no matter what, if I take the steps I'm going to take for my highest good, then everything's going to work out for my highest good and for the highest good of all concerned. I really believe that. So your intention must be on point. It must be for the highest good of all concerned rather than using any lower level intentions such as manipulation and guilt tripping and so on in order to get him back. Because what will happen is even if you do get him back, it will not stand the test of time at all. Which then leads me to the second reason why walking away can actually really make you magnetic, which is it triggers the wounded child inside of him. So I believe from a personal development perspective, from a spiritual perspective, that we all have uh, an inner child that tends to run the show a lot of, our, a lot of the times in our lives. You know, when we are triggered by different experiences, it's because on some level we associate that pain that we're feeling with 
experiences that we may have had when we were a child or we developed belief systems in certain areas of life when we were younger and that then is then playing out in the current circumstances so for example let's say you know your father or your mother ran out on you when you were seven or eight years old and you know these people were your you know your rock they were the people that were there to provide you with safety at a young age not just physical safety but emotional safety as well suddenly they've walked away from your life and it's it, it can create so much pain i've got so many clients who've had this happen to them and you can see those patterns play out and it, it hurts my heart so much but what it does in those situations is that they often will have felt abandoned on some level so those wounds of abandonment have then appeared so that in the child basically create an association that when this happens I feel abandoned or something along those lines and then when we create that belief then what we're doing is we're trying to protect ourselves from experiencing that pain in the future so we adapt who we are we adapt our approach in life we adapt the way we act in different circumstances to prevent ourselves from having that but also what it can mean is that when we get into relationships our deeper fear is often that we don't want to get abandoned that we're afraid of abandonment and so then suddenly if you're in a situation where your relationship this person that you've you've built trust with and you've built a connection with if they're slowly starting to distance themselves immediately emotionally that inner child then kicks in but it works also in the opposite so if you're in a situation where you're thinking about leaving and you start to reclaim your power or you begin to set the pathway for you to be able to, to walk away, that then can trigger those wounds of abandonment or other wounds inside of him as well. Because before he had control, he had power in the situation, now you're reclaiming that, then suddenly that will trigger him. Now his wounds might be different, but the manifestation of it is the same. The wounded child appears and then starts to get triggered quite a bit in that situation. So what that does is it forces him to then really push hard to try and get you back. Now, once again, it all comes down to intent. I don't want you to do it with this intent of, oh, if I do this and do this strategy, then he's going to somehow come back to me and things like that. It's got to be for the highest good of all concerned. But what it can do is if he is trying to come your way, then it can allow you to start opening up some dialogue and some conversations, some productive conversations that can allow the two of you to make the best decision for your future. Whether that's talking about the past, how you guys got to this current place, or you just decide, hey, look, I'm not sure about this anymore. We're on different paths. We have different values and so on. Maybe this is not the right thing for us. Whatever it is, it allows that dialogue to be opened up between the two of you, which can only be a good thing. And finally, from more of a spiritual perspective, it allows you to move beyond the ego and then move more into your spirit and what is for your highest good. See, most of the time in everyday life, we are living through our ego. We're worried about needs around security. We're worried about how important we look to other people. We're worried about our status. We're worried about how much money we've got. We're worried about having this you know, relationship that's going to stand the test of time. We're always living very much in our ego. What we need to be doing more is coming from the spirit and when we get to a place we say you know what i actually have decided that i'm going to walk away we're making decisions that are coming from a place of what is for my highest good and what's for the highest good of our family and when we take more of a collective view when we take a holistic view at this what we do is we step more into the spirit and the spirit when we come from that place when we have that intent great things are both bestowed upon us you know, often I find that you know clients, husbands often come back in that situation or they empower themselves to a point where they realize, look, I've been treated so poorly or the circumstances have been so toxic for such a long time. This is actually just not serving me at all anymore. I'm ready to do something that is actually going to be not only going to create joy and happiness for me, but also for my family in the long term as well. And even for him as well, because the reality is you don't want him to suffer through all of this. And often, you know, people hold on to relationships for reasons that, you know, aren't necessarily for the long term. It's more for the short term. We don't like to experience pain right now. Problem is, though, we might get a little bit of short term pleasure 
you know, we might get a little bit of a moment of connection and so on, but then the same patterns keep running over and over, and then in the long term, we continue to face those problems, and that's not an enjoyable thing. So when we move to that higher level of consciousness, where we start making decisions from love, from joy, from peace, from acceptance, or, you know, from faith and so on, then, you know, good things start to happen. We get supported along the way. And we tend to draw in some pretty magnificent experiences in our lives. Now, I appreciate that, you know, it can feel very, very difficult when you're in the heat of the battle to be able to get to this higher place. And I, I respect that completely. It's, it's not easy, but it's absolutely possible. And you have the capability to do it. And so if you are in a place where you're struggling, you're not sure how to move forward, you're not feeling like you're able to make the progress that you want to make in your life. And, you know, ultimately you do want to save this marriage then I'd love to be of service to you through my program, The Authentic Relationship System. It's an amazing program. You'll get so much out of it, not just in terms of the content and the material in the program, but also the ability to connect with some incredible women in the community as well who have gone through some really tough times, but have come out of it to create healing, both within themselves, but also within their marriage as well. It's an amazing system, and I know you're going to absolutely love it. So, you know, if you connect with my work, if you're, you know, like my New Zealand accent and all that sort of stuff, then um, what I'd encourage you to do is in the description section below, just click on that link that just says book a call with me. Just click on that link, choose a time that works for you, and then I'll contact you at that scheduled time. I can't wait to be of service to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've liked it, make sure you hit that like button below. If you want to get more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And do let me know if you've got any comments or takeaways or, or questions or anything. Just let me know. I love reading the comments, and I'll make sure I respond to every single one of you. And apologies for my voice as well. I've lost it a couple of days ago. It's slowly getting back. And if you want to learn the four signs that a man is truly serious about you, then click this video above. Thank you so much. God bless. And I'll talk to you in the next video.